welcome to today's Lego Technic video. I'm excited to present to you one of my latest designs. It's a very compact and powerful two-speed automatic gearbox that's based on the powered up uh, application on the left here and a powered up hub and a powered up motor. Now what makes this gearbox very powerful is the fact that the gearing ratio in the first gear is 1 to 4 between the motor and the output and once it switches gears it goes to 1 to 12 so it's tripling the torque on the output of the motor in that lower gear. So I'll just give you a demonstration of how it works. So like I said on the left here, I've got my powered up uh, application that I've written to control this gearbox. So I'll just turn that on by pushing the yellow button and having the motor turn on. So as you can see here, we're now in the uh, first gear. Uh, you know, the output's going at a reasonably good speed. And as soon as I start loading up that output, it'll automatically switch to the lower gear. So as you can see, as I load it up, once the torque is high enough, it automatically switches to the lower gear. We've now got a very powerful 1 to 12 gearing ratio between input and output. It's very hard to hold that tight. And I'll now just, as soon as you reduce the torque, it'll switch back again to the uh, higher gear or the higher speed gear. So just demonstrate that again. Just uh, load up the torque, slows right down, switches gears and let go it'll speed up again and go to the first gear so uh, if you're interested in knowing how i've done this design please keep watching and i'll explain the details of the programming and the gearbox itself <clears throat> all right so i'll just explain how the internal gearing of the gearbox works so the central idea of this gearbox is to have this kind of pivot gear that can change uh, the connection either to the left or to the right depending on the direction of the motor so what I've got here in the middle is the motor drive shaft and if that rotates in a uh, one direction, in a clockwise direction, it will drive that switching gear to the left. And if I rotate that in the opposite direction, it will switch and drive the gears on the right. So what that allows me to do is create a different gearing ratio in the left path compared to the right path between the input and the output. So again, if it's on, uh, on the left, it goes um, you know, at one speed, you can see that blue uh, thin lift arm going in that direction slowly if I switch the other direction by connecting to the right it slows down to that uh, that slower speed so that's the lower gear so that's the central idea of this gearbox and again depending on the you know, amount of gearing on the left and the right path you can create different gearing ratios but I'll just show you the gearing ratio here what I've got is an 8 driving a 24 and then a 24 driving a 16 so it's effectively a 1 to 2 between uh, the motor shaft and uh, this left gear here or the right gear pretty much symmetrical and then after that underneath it drives a uh, 12 driving 24 is another 1 to 2 gearing ratio so the left path has got a gearing ratio of 1 to 4 and the right path because it's got this extra gearing from this side to there uh, that 1 to 3 has got a 1 to 12 so that's the key principle of the mechanics of the gearbox and, and the big advantage of this is there's actually very few gears between the input and the output. So on the left path there's uh, three pairs of gears and the right path is four gears and that's a, a very important principle for a gearbox because every pair of gears does incur some friction loss and the more gears you have the more friction loss uh, between the input and the output. So uh, that pretty much explains how the gearing works. Alright, so I'll just explain how the programming works in the background. So um, I've just got my program here to switch to programming mode. Here it is. Um, so essentially what the idea is is that we measure the speed of the motor and because as the torque on the motor increases, the speed will decrease, we can use that as a measurement for uh, determining the amount of torque on that motor. So like I say, as the torque increases, the speed decreases. And that's how we create our switching points between the first gear and the second gear. So the idea is, is that once we see a decrease in torque below a certain level, we switch to the lower gear, which case because um, the you know, gearing ratio has been changed from one quarter to a twelfth, the motor, even though the output torque is still the same, the motor will see a lot less torque, a third less, and will go to a higher speed. So that's our switching point. Then once that torque does start to reduce, um, we can then switch back to first gear by monitoring the speed of the motor be, be, uh, above or below a certain threshold. So just to simply explain uh, that in terms of the programming, what I've got here on the left is the start. So I push the start button, that will trigger uh, the first part of the interface or the, the program. It will turn the motor on at a speed of minus 100, so that's rotating in the anti-clockwise direction. 
that's the first gear. Um, I've got a small delay there, just to get that going, and then I've got here a test for a switch. So if I switch the uh, little switch in the interface, uh, that one there, it goes between automatic mode and not automatic mode. So if that's on, it'll go into automatic mode. In automatic mode, what it does is we test the speed of the motor. Like first, we test which direction it's going in, so that determine which gear we're currently in. So if we're in the negative speed, that means the speed's below zero. Um, then we use this test here, and then if the speed goes um, below minus 60 or above minus 60, which means it's going slower, slower and slower, then at that point we switch to the second gear by reversing the motor, so going from minus 100 to plus 100. That then switches gears, like I've demonstrated mechanically. We have a small delay of a couple of seconds just to stabilize that process, and then we repeat the loop. So if we're not going in the negative direction, then we must be going in the positive direction. So if we are going in the positive direction, then we again, we test the speed. And if it's above a certain threshold, then again, we switch back to the, um, the first gear or the, you know, the faster gear the, where the motor is going in the negative direction. And again, these thresholds you can set, you know, depending on your application. You know, you might want to switch uh, sooner or later, depending again on how you're trying to use your, your program. So that kind of explains how the programming works. Uh, it's fairly straightforward and again it's very customizable. You can change your own thresholds uh, and make the uh, operating points different again depending on how you're trying to use this gearbox. Alright so if you're wondering how powerful this gearbox is I'll just give you a demonstration of that. I've replaced that gear with a wheel just to make it easier to hold. I'll turn it on and we'll just put on some resistance. Okay, it switches gears and now look at that it is just twisting that axle to pieces. Look at that, it's not until it gets to almost a stalling point that it fails. Look at that axle, completely destroyed. Don't do this at home. Sacrificing a good axle for this demonstration. Okay, so for the final demonstration, I've built this test vehicle that's got the gearbox in the middle there, and this has been designed just to go forward and push. So it's going to push these two Lego Technic models uh, first in the low gear, and then it will switch automatically and make a more powerful push to be able to push these vehicles across. Alright, so I'm just going to run the experiment first with the um, automatic gearbox being disabled. So it's only going to stay in the first gear and try and push these two cars. So let's see what happens when I start that experiment. Off it goes. Okay, it's pushing the first car okay. But as soon as it hits the second one, it pretty much stalls and can't push any harder. Okay, so let's repeat that experiment. Now I have had to load up the uh, pushing vehicle with some silver bars just to get some extra traction. Okay, but that should be much better. We'll now turn on the automatic gearbox. Okay, let's go. And now, boom, automatic gearbox switches gears. A lot more pushing power. And look at that. Wow, it's pushing both cars now. Very, very slow push, but it's definitely doing it. It's, uh, it's moving across there. It's a, like I say, it's a very powerful gearbox. Just pushing, pushing, pushing. Zoom out a bit. But look at that, what a what a good powerful gearbox. There's no gear slippage at all, it's just non-stop pushing. Alright, so that really demonstrated how powerful this gearbox really is. Now unfortunately that does have one major flaw that you may have noticed and that it only goes in one direction. Of course it uses the reversing mechanism of the motor to change gears that only leaves one direction for the uh, output axle to go. So the subject of my next video will be to build one of these kind of gearboxes that can go um, both forward and in reverse and automatically switch gears and still be very powerful. So keep an eye out for that video. Please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.